Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Ben Irwin and this week, I gotta tell you before we get into the news, I did something that I haven't done in years. I went to take a piss test. And guess what? I passed! Woo! So, you know, I was very confident going into it, but there's always that irrational voice in the back of your head saying, all right, you've been to a few Dave Matthews Band shows recently. You didn't accidentally breathe while you were there, did you? So, I'm in the clinic and my results are being tabulated, and I continue to think my little thoughts. And all I could think was, thank God they're not looking for bath salts, because then I'd be screwed. Which, you know, would have been an okay thought to think, but the problem rose when that innocent little thought went from my brain and out my mouth hole for everyone in the clinic to hear. So all these nurses are aghast and everyone was looking at me like I'd really just down some bath salts. One guy starts ruffling through his papers on his desk and he was like, uh, do we check for that? So I spent the next three minutes of my life trying to convince the clinic staff that this was just a wee little joke. Perhaps I could have read my audience better and everything's okay. So, that's the story of what happened when I got drug tested. Just so you can rest assured that we got clean pee here at the Ben Irwin Show. Anyway, here's the news. Yesterday, more news came out of Penn State as a letter written by Joe Paterno in December or January before his death was released. The letter detailed Penn State academics and the football program's successes despite all the Sanduskying. Joe Pa was very clear in praising the school's record of achievements and figuratively told students and alumni that, hey, Got your back. And with this, the Paterno family bashed the investigation into how the sex abuse is being handled. The full report is to be released today, and whether you think the letter is political posturing or not, the message is something that has resonated and continues to within the Penn State community. Since despite the scandal, the university has managed to solicit $207.8 million in donations during the 2011-12 fiscal year and that's the second highest amount in the university's history. So, I, like many other people, paid for a Penn State education, and I know it's not a cheap place. Maybe I'm the only one, but upon hearing the 207.8 million, did anyone else kind of feel like a sucker? Is it just me? Is it me? Okay. Oh, what else is going on in the world? Hey, did you see the other day on TV with that, with that yo-yo playing his guitar on the MTV? Yeah, that's the way you do it. Get your money for nothing and your chicks for free. Wait, if you don't have DirecTV, you did not see it. Because DirecTV and Viacom couldn't come to a pricing agreement, and then blah -de blah happened, and then something about people can't watch crappy commercial lane shows, and yada yada, something about more money, and some custom kitchen deliveries. So, to which I said, who still watches TV anyway? No, really, like, I don't care about this story. The shows are on the internet anyway, which was where everyone was yesterday saying how pissed they are. Everyone's up in arms because they want their entertainment cheap. Meanwhile, no one seems to give a damn that the House voted to repeal Obamacare yesterday. They'd rather be on the couch watching the Vi- the, the, the Viacom. Oh, wait. They want their money for nothing, too. My bad. <laughs> but I must admit that yesterday it was pretty funny seeing Mitt Romney get booed by the NAACP for saying that he'll repeal Va Obamacare, and then a mere hours later the House did it. But, but, but what about the shows? Humma, humma, humma. Finally today, Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James, the controversial novel that has been dubbed mommy porn by the media, continues to make headlines. In addition to making money for the book's publisher, the Fifty Shades trilogy is helping another industry, the sex toy industry. And I'm not talking about dildos or anything, but like whips, gag balls, and pink handcuffs. And it's not confirmed, but I feel like assless chaps are selling pretty well too. I, we'll have to fact check the assless chaps. But nonetheless, products are flying off the shelves, and business is not soft in the sex industry. So, gentlemen, I, I would like to propose a toast to E.L. James for making this dirty, kinky crap mainstream. Ms. James, you are doing the Lord's work by turning our women on to weirdness. I mean, now we don't have to use roofies to get a chick tied to our bed. I'm only kidding. I use chloroform. I, remember kids, when engaging in S&M, always use a safe word. A public service announcement from the Ben Irwin Show. 
I don't know what I'm saying. This episode's over. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you next week. And hey, if you're watching the podcast or on YouTube or Blip or whatever, take a look at the new website, thebenerwinshow.com. There's commenting available. It's feature rich and it is new. It's sexy. You'll love it. So check it out. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.